Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Knox. <laughs> Fuck! Damn. Clap like the Democrats give a shit. Come on. Thank you very much for having us out here. Those L unit guys, awesome. No? Not really? Fuck. You're confused? I am too. Yes, you are. You are old. That's what we call observational comedy. <laughs> okay. Okay, first of, all, first of all, what I want to say uh, for all you Gen 2 users, don't optimize the show. Keep the comments to yourselves. We got it. It's cool. That, that is a perfect example of what the fuck not to do. Right there. Also, thank you very much. Um, actually, I do want to thank the uh, organizers of Freak Nick for letting us come out and uh, make with the funny ha-has uh, and whatnot. It's, uh, it's a great fucking place to be because actually most of the comics, or all the comics uh, that are coming up tonight are geeks as well. Uh, and there are a lot of jokes we usually can't do because people don't get them. Which is really nice so we can come out here because you guys read, which is nice. A lot of audiences, not so much. No. See, I already went over this. A like, okay, we like a drunk crowd because they're nice, they're happy, they laugh, that's cool. Um, belligerent, not so much. We have a couple of red shirts around here, don't we? Awesome. If I point at somebody, they're out. I have that power. Just letting you know. You don't have to be like right here. I'm just saying. It's cool. I, uh, I think we can learn a lot from the salad bar. God damn it. Seriously. I like being in front of people, and I can get fucking mean. We cool? Awesome. That's awesome. Are we ready to get, get fucking going now? Woo! Fucking clap, come on. Woo! You're going to be drinking soon, and that's fucking awesome. All right. Now, uh, I do think we can learn a lot from the, uh, the salad bar at a grocery store. Because I can go into Kroger's and I can get like a half pound salad with everything. Or a half pound of chopped eggs. Cost the same. I guess what I'm trying to say is that we shouldn't assign value to people based on what we are. We should assign value to people based on weight. I'll take the chuckles. It's a good start. That's awesome. Who else likes going to Renaissance festivals? See, that's good. I usually don't get that kind of uh, reaction. And the reason I like going to Renaissance festivals, obviously, because they're magical. For instance, for instance, Pixies and Elves, which are the embodiment of beauty and grace in fantasy literature, turn into 300-pound goth chicks. And that's special. I thought. Also something that's interesting at the Renaissance Festival, uh, society kind of flips on itself, which is odd, because all of a sudden you have ex-jocks and soccer moms that want to fit in with us. And I have a tip for those people. If you're wearing like a Titans jersey, elf ears and a cape, you don't look authentic so much as gay. And that's not a badge of honor coming from a group of people who spent three months out of their lives waiting to get tickets to episode three. <laughs> Just saying. I, uh, I have a day job, like uh, most of the comics up here. And uh, I work really hard at my day job. It's not because I like it. Not because I enjoy hanging out with my boss. I just don't ever want to have a joke one day about how I got fired from three different Burger Kings. Or how I was the best fry flipper ever. That would have made more sense if it was burger, but it will keep fucking going. Because, see, that's a cute anecdote, provided you actually make it in comedy. If you don't, then you're just a sad old douche that didn't quite have the moxie to make it at the king. Which is sad. I, uh, 
Does anybody, in the, guys in the audience, do you have a preference as far as uh, single moms? Would you hit that shit? Yeah? See, I didn't have a preference until recently. Once again, I'm cool. Got it. Awesome. I didn't have a preference until recently. I was at the movie theater, and I saw, uh, I saw an attractive lady. She had a child in tow. And I asked myself, would you have sex with her? Am I... And you're helping. Hey, Tom, what, what was part two of that? That excellent plan. What was part two? Nothing? Awesome. So I, so I was at a movie theater, and I saw an attractive woman with a child. Would I bang her? No. And it's not because I, I, I have a problem with single mothers. She looked kind of high maintenance to me. She was wearing really nice clothes, looked kind of expensive, expensive makeup. And sorry, bitch, but the last time I checked, MILF was not mother I'd like to finance. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, um, I had something next, I'm sure. How are you doing, Sarah? Are you doing all right? That is fabulous. Do you watch a lot of TV? Not a lot of TV? You don't have cable? Makes sense. I don't know what that means. Do you? No. Awesome. I was watching VH1 recently. And they had the 100 most shocking moments in music. One of those moments was when M MC Hammer lost all his money and had to sell his house. And I thought it would be cool if you could buy the house and hire him to clean it. Because <laughs> he could use the money, I'm sure. And he could do really cool stuff, like he could have him put rags on his feet and do the hammer dance across the marble. And you could say awesome things like, stop, yeah, you can take a break now, it's cool. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you missed a spot. If you... And uh, now hammer, we've talked about it before. That's an autographed baseball. It's a collectible. You can't touch this. You guys are awesome. You, you got a lot better, which is good. See, we're, we're ramping it up, which is nice. I really like that. Anybody like impressions? At all? I'm doing it for that guy. Because he was enthusiastic first. This is my impression of an extremely overly jealous boyfriend. What? Think I don't see the way you're looking at her? What, am I fucking blind? One. Just give me one good reason, Grandma. <laughs> Yeah, that was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> Fucking awesome. <laughs> I was in a porn store recently, um, and I saw something that didn't make sense. There was a fat girl blow-up doll. <laughs> now, that seemed wholly unnecessary to me. And in case you weren't aware, I have some news. You can fuck a fat girl. It's not really even terribly difficult. You just hang outside the Kroger's with like a pint of haagen dots and a dream. <laughs> and it'll work out, I'm sure. <laughs> okay, now in this crowd, like, I, you're my people. I know my people. So, uh, who are the NASCAR fans in the crowd? One guy? Awesome. See, the rest of you would probably say that NASCAR is not a sport. And you're wrong. Here's why. The races are really long. And they don't get bathroom breaks. So that means over the history of NASCAR, at least one racer said to piss themselves during a race. <laughs> Much like binge drinking, I consider that a sport. <laughs> That's why I'm also a really big fan of the senior PGA Tour. <laughs> Is that a sport? Yeah, it depends. You guys have been excellent so far, and I want you to keep it up. Uh, coming up next is a, uh, an excellent friend of mine, very close friend, uh, my hetero life mate, whose uh, who's 21st birthday is actually uh, today. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night, he will actually be uh, opening up for Ralphie Mae, which is a big fucking deal at Zany's. That's fucking awesome, guys. 
Give it up for the extremely hilarious Rob Haynes. What's going on? Oh shit, they're moving things, sorry. Woo! How's everybody doing today? Tonight, awesome! Yeah, it's my 21st birthday, I saw some ladies in the audience, figure I might get a little lucky, so I went to the bathroom right two seconds before this, checked my hair, and it occurred to me between the Ben Affleck hair and then the goatee and the huge man titties, I've never looked more like a lesbian in my life. Awesome. But I think I pretty. St- I, I think that means I still got a shot with like two of you. So if you want to talk amongst yourselves, that'd be great. So yeah, yeah. Um, here in Nashville, it's a great city. I don't know if you guys are from here, but it's fucking awesome. That being said, I'm originally from a little burg called Piney Flats, Tennessee. Okay, awesome. I don't know what that is. Like some Jedi mind. What the? No. Yeah. I'm originally from Piney Flats, Tennessee. It's a great little town. My last job I had in Piney Flats, I worked at the local strip club in a town of 302 people. The name of the club, I shit ye not, was called Fuzzy Holes. It's a great little club. Our second choice of names, obviously, was Big Old Titties in Your Face. But we couldn't get that on the sign, so... But uh, working at strip clubs kind of cool. Uh, the only problem is you're stuck in there for like 12 hours during a day, and the only food you have is the strip club buffet. And I would never eat the food there because when you order the wings at a strip club, you get 10 wings tossed in your choice of sauces. You have a uh, barbecue, hot sauce, or penicillin, which is hard to make into a sauce because strippers are whores, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you're aware. I know you haven't seen a boob, but they're fucking sweet. But, uh, yeah, big thing. I was actually just back there two weeks ago. I had to uh, go in town for a wedding. My uncle just died, and it was really sad. Because uh, the worst part of it was we couldn't fulfill his will, like, in his last will and testament. He wanted to be buried, I quote, with his loved ones, but the strip club wouldn't let us tear up the parking lot. So, what are you going to do? But I'm uh, just back there. My dad retired, which is great. Uh, he's 60 years old. Finally quit his job, and uh, he's taken up, uh, as his retirement hobby, uh, he built this huge one by one acre by one acre vegetable patch in the backyard of my house. So essentially, what his hobby is is migrant farm work, <laughs> subsistence farming. Awesome. But it got me to thinking. Like I understand it because he gets to use the tools he never got to use before. Like he can use his shovel and his plow and the old colored man from up the road. So it's great. It's fucking sweet for him. But uh, was well, there? I read in the newspaper back uh, the Piney Flats Times. Uh, the second headline, of course, the first headline was huge news across the nation. Lincoln frees the slaves. We're great to hear about that. But uh, a buddy of mine just got caught running the biggest meth lab in all of Carter County history. <laughs> Woo! The thing is, a scant six years ago, this is the same guy who was cheating off me in chemistry. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, he can't figure out the quadratic equation, but now he knows how to make crank out of lightning bugs and orange juice. He had a D minus in math, but an A plus in math. So awesome. Glad to hear it. We're proud. But I was just down at Tower Records earlier before I got here, and uh, I saw the coolest fucking thing I've seen in a while. Uh, uh, Capitol Records put out what they're calling the 20th Century Masters Collection. It's a bunch of old LPs from the 70s, remastered, put on CD for $9.99. So they have, like, Kiss, the Eagles. They're putting them out again, and it's great. But Billy Ray Cyrus's first album made it into the 20th Century Masters Collection. Not the second album. We all know that's bullshit. The first album, Billy Ray Cyrus had his fucking greatest. Got that one out of curiosity. Turns out it's a, uh, it's a box set. You get the single for Achy Breaky Heart, bottle of Jack Daniels, and some razor blades. Tandy to have it one time. Yeah. So my dad thinks I'm gay. Anybody else? Yeah. Woo. Like I do. <laughs> Ladies, call me. Tillman, not so much. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my dad thinks I'm gay. I don't know why. I mean, just because I don't have a girlfriend, and I'm into computers, and I played Rizzo in the high school production of Grease. <laughs> Five years in a row. <laughs> I don't quite get it. That's just me. But, uh, yeah. So I was back home visiting my folks about two weeks ago or so, and, uh, 
I was there. It was the weekend. It was the last half of the week, and uh, I started running out like I'm a creature of habit, and it became time for me to masturbate again because I'm a Sunday guy. After church, before football, that's how I roll. But uh, I had to sleep on the couch because my parents don't have a room for me anymore. So I'm sleeping on the couch, and it's time for me to masturbate, and I can't figure out what to do because I obviously can't do it on the couch because Dad's watching pregame, and he wouldn't be into that. So the only thing I could think of was I've got to do it in the shower. The problem is I'm a big guy. I don't know if you noticed. I'm wearing dark colors. I'm a fat ass. It's fine. But uh, I'm kind of like a SUV. I've got a high center of gravity. I'll roll over. So if I get into the shower and start working it really hard, I could fucking fall. <clears throat> and that would be bad. So I did the only thing I could think of. I laid down and did it. But the problem is there's a huge difference in water pressure between when you're standing and when you're lying down. Because when you're standing, it's not bad. But when you're laying down, it feels like somebody's peeing on you. And that unlocks something I was completely not prepared to deal with at this juncture. Fuck. Sam. So, so I just moved to Nashville. I'm officially a Nashvillian. It's fucking sweet. Moved into my first real house. I'm really proud of it. But I felt like an adult while I was moving. I felt like a real man. But while I was packing up the truck, I realized I only had one box marked books, but four marked Star Wars guys. And uh, that hurts a little bit in here. Woo! Awesome. But uh, I just moved in. I got a couple roommates I'm living with in this house. One of them's a lady. Nobody's identifying with me on that. Awesome. Sweet. But um, she's a lady. And she has, uh, she's kind of flat-chested, like she's what I like to call a carpenter's dream, flat as a board, easy to nail, it's fucking sweet. But she's flat-chested, and she said, Rob, we were drunk with her the other night, she's like, Rob, I wish I had big breasts, and I'd love, like, I've got big breasts, they're not all that much to deal with. <laughs> like, really, I barely use them except when company's over. <laughs> and even then, it's mostly for storage. <laughs> so, Yeah. But I'm looking for a new job while I'm out here. Uh, the last job I applied for was screening packages at a prison, which is sweet. It really is. And uh, normally I wouldn't do something like that because I fear prison like Alabama fears change. But I need the money. So what are you going to do? But I, I'd start it. <laughs> and the, they told me the top three things that are smuggled into a jail. And number one is obviously it's cigarettes. And number two right behind it is candy. Number three weirded me out a little bit because it's health care and beauty aids. Maybe it's just me, but if I'm stuck in a cell with a guy who I haven't seen a woman in five to ten, the last thing I want is for him to think my hair smells like mangoes. Because I got creamy white skin and a pair of rack you're going to see better than any you're going to see on cell block D. I'm already a target. It's not going to bode well for me. But, uh, awesome. They fucking love me in the green room. It's great. That's where I'm recording the CD. It's going to be sweet. But uh, as I said, I'm a big guy, and uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm big enough, in my opinion. I'm trying to get bigger. I want to be that government-funded type of fat. Like, I want to get that in the fucking, like, I, want, I don't even want, like, the government to send me a check anymore. I want them to, like, back an army truck to my house, fill a checks mix. Just bring it on in. It's going to be fucking sweet. Like, they don't want even, I don't want to be called Rob anymore. I'm going to be called Rob of the Hut. It's going to be fucking awesome. I'm going to have Ronald McDonald brought to me encased in carbonite. I'm looking forward to it. You can all come over and party. It's going to be fucking sweet. But, uh, yeah. But I'm single now, so ladies, give me a holler. Ah. Room number 808 is going to be sweet. It's where the free beer is. Woo! But uh, I'm single now, and it's completely my fault. I broke up with my girlfriend like two and a half weeks ago because I was looking at a really hot chick at the mall, and she slapped me and said, Rob, why do you always look at that skanky, slutty-looking girl? And I had to level with her. It's the same reason I go to Taco Bell. Doesn't look too bad when you're drunk and it's available at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> Oftentimes through a drive through window, which is sweet. It's just convenient. It's great, but uh, yeah. It's probably for the best that we broke up, because I don't know if you've seen two fat people going at it. She was a big girl, too, and I'm a big guy. Fat people fucking not attractive. Everything's just kind of glistening and jiggling. Kind of looks like a giant can of spam you left on the dryer. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let that one sink in for a minute. Yeah, you're not having that omelet tomorrow, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I was kind of depressed because we broke up because I'm insecure about the size of my penis. 
Anybody else? Nobody's insecure about the size of my penis. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm insecure about the size of my penis. And she gave it a nickname to help me out. She used to call it Bigfoot. Awesome. Made me feel like a man, but then we broke up. She called me. She's like, Rob, I never called it Bigfoot because it was big. I called it Bigfoot because while I always suspected it was there, I never actually saw it. And that hurt. But I ate some pie and I felt better. That's okay. She did get a picture of it once, but it was real blurry, so what are you going to do? But uh, yeah, it's probably for the best that we broke up because uh, she was from Michigan and she used to do the most fucking annoying thing. I'm sorry if there's anybody from Michigan in the room right now, but the most annoying thing I've ever seen, which was she couldn't just say, oh, I'm from Detroit. She had to do this move right here. I can't fucking stand this. And here's why. I'm originally from Florida. I cannot whip my cock out and show you where Orlando's at. No matter how eerily weird the highways run along the veins, it's always inappropriate. It's not fun times. Check me out tomorrow night. I'm at uh, opening for Ralph May at Zanies. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Rob Haynes, ladies and gentlemen. That is a funny motherfucker. Coming up next. Oh, it's a treat. You guys should feel privileged. I know I do. They get it. <laughs> this guy is very smart and very intelligent and extremely funny. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryan Williams. Clap, fuckers! Thank you! Oh my god, Corey! Uh, I'm sorry, Knox! Here, here's the thing, here's the thing. We call him Sippy Cup. If you have any, any balls in you whatsoever from now on, fuck Knox, Sippy Cup. I'm on the phone with my friend here. I gotta do this really, really quick before he hangs up. Okay, here's the thing. My friend just called me. I just talked to him for a half an hour. He just got arrested. Well, like, 12 hours ago, he got arrested. DUI, everybody. Right there. His name is Tony. And here's the thing. Here's, no, no, no and, and everybody laugh at him. Tony got a DUI. Uh, here's the thing. Alright, bye, Tony. Here's the thing. <laughs> When he got pulled over, and he, he tells me the whole story. Oh, man, I got pulled over. I didn't know what was happening. The, 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 we've been there. The point here is, afterwards he goes, man, all in all, it was not a positive law enforcement experience. <laughs> what the fuck is a law? What positive? Man, that was a positive law enforcement experience. He gave me a ticket and a cherry slushy. <laughs> I feel privileged I got that going for me. It's just, it's just, and a cell phone, by the way. This, this is the thing. Set your ringtones. Make them cool. I was at an Indian restaurant this afternoon. The guy in the booth next to me had a ringtone. The ringtone was the theme for Mission Impossible. Okay, and it went off. And at first I'm sitting there going, man, maybe this guy's a secret agent. And then I'm thinking, wait a second. If you're a secret agent and your ringtone is the theme for Mission Impossible, you are the worst secret agent ever. The only time that's even remotely cool is if, like, you're a secret agent who's in trouble with your wife and you just got caught for sneaking back in your house when your phone goes off. Do, 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 do. I'll take the chuckles from the Linux. It's all right. Where's my Linux people at? Hmm. Here's the thing. I got to talk to her because she has breasts. Okay, okay, I'll talk to you too, sir. Uh, here's the thing. You, no, but you've got to identify with your audiences, right? That's like the first thing they teach you when you're speaking in front of people, which the guy with long hair could really take a page from that book. Okay, here's the thing. So you identify with them, right? You, you talk to them. So this is what my mother said. She said, you have to identify with them. Go ahead and talk. Ask them where their Linux users are. And when they, when they go, woo, go, yeah, I like Linux too. I love it when Linux used to get his blanket stolen by Snoopy. This is why my parents don't give me help anymore. I went to Subway for lunch today. How many people have eaten at Subway recently? What happened? Because it used to be a cool place to go. You'd go and you'd get your food and stuff like that. Now you have to stand behind the woman who's never ordered a sub before at Subway in her life. The woman who orders everything on the goddamn sub just so you're supposed to get the bread. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'd like a turkey sandwich with lettuce and pickles. White or wheat? And onions and mayonnaise and white or wheat? And uh, jalapenos and pepper. White or wheat? What kind of uh, bread do you have? Uh. <laughs> this is why Jared got so thin he was behind this bitch for 12 hours. <laughs> and I used to think at first he just had a tapeworm. It's Jared. It's cool. He lost a lot of weight. No, he's behind her. She turns to me. She actually says this. She goes... Wow, this place is confusing. Well, it's new. So it's Subway! 
Order here, pick up here, stuff in the middle, figure it out. I think, and seriously, clap if you're with me on this one. There should be two lines at every establishment. There should, be a, there should be a line for people who go in all the time. They know the owner. They know what they want. There should be a line for people who don't know what the fuck is going on. Of course, those people would always they'd be in the wrong line. It's just the way there is. Isn't it creepy? That, how many people are here? I'm guessing there's at least 100 people here. Are there 100 people here? Okay, let's say there's a hundred people here. This is what's weird. Everybody in this room, you don't know what the 25th Amendment to the United States Constitution is, but we all remember the episode where Tom made a zoot suit out of a hammock, and he read in the little girl... Okay, you don't remember that one? Okay, how about this one? How about where Tom put on the concerto with a piano when Jerry was sleeping inside it, and he jumped up and bit him in the junk... He didn't really bit him in the junk. That's just a joke. He never, Jerry never actually was a junk biter. If you want to see somebody get bitten in the junk, you have to utter this phrase. My favorite film was The Beastmaster. <laughs> you don't hear that phrase a lot. That's like one of those things. You never hear a lot of phrases. Uh, that's one of them. Here's another phrase you don't hear every day. Are you ready? <clears throat> Man, I am sick of threesomes. <laughs> Here's one you never hear. You don't hear this phrase every day. Ready? Quick, build a barn. Okay, back to the whole Beastmaster thing. This is the reason why I like the film. And if you're with me on this one, okay, this is the only film in history where Rip Torn gets bitten the junk by a ferret. Walk into any video store in existence and say, you know, I'm in a Rip Torn getting bitten the junk by a ferret kind of mood. They will lead you to the Beastmaster, not the Beastmaster 2 through the portal of time, starring Kari Wur. I feel sorry for Kari Wur because Japanese people can't pronounce her name. Anyway. <laughs> Ryan, you are by yourself. I like it here. It's nice. Oh. oh, speak to me, sweet pitiful applause. I'm married. How many guys are married here? Yeah. I well, except for you. It's uh, that's nice that you're married to a slut. My point here is. Now, I've been married for 16 months now. We just got back from our anniversary. First anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, take them to the beach. That's all I got to say. Because nothing says forever like sand in the pussy. Can I say pussy? Are we, are we, are we, are we okay? Hold on. The thing is, there's a, the, everybody's watching us in the hotel room getting drunk. Can you hear me? <laughs> the keg is poisoned. Okay, all right, I'm back. I got married in Destin, Florida. Have you ever been down to Destin? Oh, that says love, but nothing says love like sand in the pussy. I'm telling you guys that you get married right there on the beach. My wife said to me, I do have sand in my pussy. And it's true. She had so much sand in her pussy that the Jews wandered around inside her for 40 years. She had so much sand in her pussy that Bush bombed it, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's a lot of sand. There is a camel toke Joe in... Uh, oh, God. Hold on, hold on. It was funny in here. Hold on. Uh, that's all right. My wife is actually British. She's not. She doesn't have the sexy accent, which I really, really, I'm bummed out about. But she has the whole, like, you know, mentality. I'm British, which is cool. But guys, if you ever get to make with a British chick, one phrase, avoid it with all costs, is this. Ready? The British are coming. The British are coming. If you're me, it's followed by this. No, they're not. Again. It's not really a joke. That's more of a confession to people who don't know me and wish they were somewhere else. Okay, here's the thing. <laughs> I read this in the news. Um, this is another one of my little, little true tidbits of, of news for you. There was a guy in the Midwest who just, uh, who he was going to graduate. He was a senior in the college that he was going to, and it was in the Midwest. Um, let me point a portrait for you here. Here's how the cops picked this guy up. According to the, I, read, I read this on the AP, so this is all up to the news. He was running up the road, buck naked. The cops saw him, fig uh, yeah! Wait till you hear the rest of this. This is a true story. The guy got pulled over by the cops, and as soon as he saw the, like, the lights going off, the man, who was buck naked at the time, decided it would be appropriate to rip his genitals off. Hey, hold on. Because we've all done that. Okay. And shove them in his mouth. 
And when they pulled him in, they put him in the, like, the, the, the room, and the psychiatrist came by. And according to the article, the psychiatrist said, well, we can't rule out any sort of drug use. Do you think? <laughs> when have you, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to make a confession to all you people, because we're so close. Um, I have done just about every psychedelic drug known to man. I have yet to utter the following phrase. Man, these mushrooms are good. You know what? These mushrooms are awesome. But one thing they are not, they are not rip your dick off and eat it awesome. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Speaking of ejaculation, um, now I read on the internet, this is, a, this is another little tidbit from the internet. Did you know, according to the internet, the average male ejaculate leaves the body Guys, yours, presumably. Uh, at 25 to 30 miles an hour. That's, the, like, that's, where they, that's how they clocked it. Now, according to what I've been through, it's been like maybe 15 to 20 miles an hour. But, um, you know, in my defense, most of the time when I ejaculate, it's in a school zone. So, that's... Yeah, I'll take your groans. I'll take them. I'll take them. I'll take them and bake them and cake them. Yes! Here's the thing, okay? They said, oh, do you want us to move the table? And, and I said, no, and here's why. I want to do this to you guys. Oh, yeah, because you're drunk, you know what? And I got a chance. You mind if I, you mind if I pull it down or not? I'm just going to sit on the table and tell you a couple of jokes. I feel like we've really opened up. And, and don't fret for the fact that I'm holding my set list right down here because I'm afraid of what I'm going to tell you next not being on here. Oh, this is a good one. You guys are ready. Hit record because this, this needs to be replayed. Who likes the porn? That is the dumbest question I could possibly ask at a convention like this. You have no idea. <laughs> oh, I do, my friend. I've seen horsecocks.com. Well done. Nice coding. You know what I'm saying. Mm. Oh, that's fine. You know what? I, got, I, I, was, in, I was behind a, a, a car the other day, and it was, it was too little along 70. How many people are actually from Nashville, by the way? By applause. Because raising your hands means nothing to me. I'm an oral person. I was behind a car a couple of days ago. It was a little Datsun, and immediately I thought, ooh, Geekmobile. What sealed the deal for me is it had a little bumper sticker on it. And it said, my other car is the Millennium Falcon. Oh, God. And he's going like 50 in a 60 zone, so I decided to pass him. You know who was driving? Chewbacca. <laughs> I was going to flip him off because, you know, he's going so slow. You don't not want to flip off Chewbacca. You will end up with a bowcaster between your eyes. Incidentally, um, if you know what a bowcaster is, there's a good chance you have a bumper sticker that says, My other car. <laughs> I was! You creepy guy with a goatee, you're all the same having sex with children. Okay, my point here is... Oh, no, no, listen, listen. I know you just... No, you thought, oh, I'm going to shout something out and it's awesome because they're liking me and I'm funny and all. That's cool. I like guys who shout stuff out. I get my, my best bits. I was with my wife a couple of uh, uh, months ago and some guy uh, in the audience, we were, we were sitting there watching a comic. He was good. Um... And, like, in the middle of the whole thing, this guy starts shouting out stuff, murder, 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 and he's, like, the big, like, big Republican bastard, you know, with, the, like, the big hairy arms. You know what this guy was like? He was like the guy you always see sitting out in front of Applebee's at, like, 7 o'clock at night with his family waiting for a table, you know what I'm talking about? And, and big alpaca wrist guards, just the big furry son of it. And, and I started to, like, make, my wife got nervous because he's heckling the comedian on stage. So I started, like, interjecting and just saying stupid stuff along the way. There. The guy would be like, rah, 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 rah. I lean over my wife and go, George W. Bush is a saint. Just to make my wife, like, you know, kind and fine. Have you ever been, like, in a room where, like, it gets really quiet for no reason whatsoever? Unlike tonight. You okay? You all right? I know, but it's water. Oh, I, I got them. They're good. But you enjoy your, your wooden chair. Um. Uh, Blah, 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 blah. I'm not having a stroke. I smell bread. You know, that sort of guy. The, the, the guy, the guy. Here's the thing, though. This is what got me. Is that, like, it, it got real. You know the thing where, like, it just, just total quiet for no reason whatsoever? That guy was blah, 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 blah. The whole room gets, the whole room, it gets totally silent. And here's me screaming out, my gay son's dead to me. So I was talking about porn. Remember that? That was awesome. And then the guy, and then the back. And the back. Here's a, this, is, this is why I don't watch porn anymore. And it's not because I'm gay. But, you know. uh, 
I'm really not. Okay. Uh, I'm, re- I'm, I'm serious, dude. Don't come up to me after the show. Okay. I was in a little tiny town in southeast Missouri, and I was, like, recently single. My girlfriend and I had just broken up, major relationship, and I was trying to get over it, and I was sinking to the bottom of a bottle. Not that I would do that nowadays. My point here... Uh, Oh, and I, there, was a, there was a little uh, Korean joint, mom and pop joint, and a Korean woman owned it with her husband on the corner, and it was all videos. And I thought, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sink to the bottom of videos. I'm going to watch every single video in that store. I'm going to become, like, really, really ingrained with the video people. I'm going to be totally, to- that's, that's, you know. So I, I used to go there every single night, and I thought, this is how I'm going to get over the girlfriend. One Friday night, I walk in. This woman who owned the Korean place totally wanted me. And I know you're thinking, ladies, who wouldn't want this guy? But this woman totally wanted me. Here's how I could tell. My, every single movie that I would rent, no matter what, it didn't matter what. Oh, how? Because Angelina Jolie, see through a dress, that's a good one. That's what I'd hear from her every single time I walk, you know, no matter what I rented. Ooh, the Beastmaster, ooh, that's a good one. Rip torn and get bit into junk by a ferret. Call me Appa. I'm in there one Friday night, and I decide I'm just brazen, you know, looking around. Ooh, Renee Zellweger, she's in Texas 3. All right, I'll see Chainsaw, no problem. Ooh, Matthew McConaughey. And I'm, I'm getting ready to make my purchases when the ex-girlfriend walks in. Guys, you ever been around when, like, the ex-girlfriend shows up for no reason? And she's with, and she's with a guy, and I know they're on a date because he's willing to see fried green tomatoes. So... I do the only natural thing that I can think of on a Friday night in a crowded video store. I run to the back. What is in the back row of every single mom and pop video store in America? The porn! And this woman who owns the place, who's been flirting with me for two and a half months, is back there restocking the shelves. So good to see you back here. Oh, nobody ever rents a Diza once. She's pointing at the Asian aisle. And immediately, oh, God, what am I going to do? She says this to me. She goes... She goes, nobody ever rents these, but, you know, if that's your thing, ow, or she doesn't really make the ow noise, but you guys are with me, right? It's not necessarily my thing, but now I'm going to insult her if I don't get it, and I'm going to insult myself if I do get it, so what do I do? I go, well, I'm just browsing. I'm just browsing in the porn aisle? She goes, give it a shot. I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot! I grab the first thing I look at. I go heading up to the aisle. I'm in the middle of the store when I look down and I realize I haven't just rented Asian porn. Ladies and gentlemen, I've rented gay Asian porn. (laughs) And this is the 90s. This is before DVDs. This is when all porn comes in that oversized cereal box container. The Captain Crunch version. Hi, how are you? Oh, oh, it's called Bromie. How interesting. Well... I go up to the counter, I put it down, her husband is running the thing up, he looks down at me, apparently his problems are solved, oh, he, she's not a hinting on you, no problem there. Rent or buy, the guy asked me rent or buy, but he's got a really thick Asian accent, and I, you know what, if you want to come to this country, that's fine, I don't have a problem with that, come to this country, infiltrate us, do whatever you want, open up your own shop, I know for a fact that the only reason you're over here is to give me the shits, and the reason why is because I've eaten a lot of Thai food, uh, I call it tyria, by the way, as long as I'm doing 75 minutes here. Moving on. The guy says, rent or buy. I don't hear him because I'm freaked out, and it just turns out that my girlfriend is behind me in the line. That's a little embarrassing. There's two reasons why it's embarrassing. Reason number one, I'm renting gay Asian porn. Reason number two, I'm renting gay Asian porn! So when he says rent to buy, I say, whatever. What is he going to do? Three ninety five to rent it, forty nine ninety five to buy it. Guess what he did? You bet your ass I watched it. I paid 50 bucks for gay Asian porn. It was a beautiful story. It was subtitled. Do you believe that it was subtitled? Someone along the line said, you know what? We need to subtitle it. They're not going to follow the story. We're going to, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yen shot. That's what that was. That was. I watched it. It was a beautiful story. I cried for reasons I don't want to get into. I cried. Here's the thing. I accidentally watched it all the way through, like, you know, 40 times. Here's my point. I'm still heterosexual, happily married, love women, all that. But the silver lining is this. Um, 
no matter what happens in my life, I can always be stranded now in Hong Kong. Don't know anybody lost in the middle of a city. I can walk up to any person and say, hey, I'm here to fix the stereo. <laughs> Guys, my name is Ryan Williams. I've taken up enough of your damn time. Thank you very, very much. I'm sorry, man. Ryan Williams. Jesus Christ, that was hilarious. The next guy coming up is, uh, actually, he works with Dolomite. Nothing? God. This guy actually uh, goes all across the, uh, the region. Uh, actually, he was in Knoxville recently doing a little MC gig. He MCs at Zany's every once in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, legendary old school rapper, Chad Ryden. Thank you very much. Who the fuck is Dolomite? Scott. Okay. That dude. Yeah, I work in an IT department, and when I got the job, it was kind of cool and stuff because it was legitimate, and they were paying me to be a nerd. And uh, I called all my friends. I was like, hello, I got network switches for all of my bitches. And uh, they didn't care. <laughs> There's some girls here, man, and I'm surprised at that. Congratulations. Give it up for the ladies. Showing up. It's awesome. Man, I'm married, and I've been married for so long. It's like, man, I, I just, I've been through so much internet porn that I don't even know how to interact with women I find attractive anymore. It's like now when I see a chick that's pretty hot, I just run up and I try to double click her. <laughs> it never works. It's never worked once. So you guys are all kind of geeky and stuff. Uh, so, okay, who uses Firefox for a browser? All right. Who uses Internet Explorer? Mm, beta. Nobody. <laughs> I'm just trying to see what's going on. No, you guys are nerds. That's cool. Uh, we, we, normally, when you we say that to a comedy crowd, they're like, I click on the E, and I, stuff happens. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I promise you, nothing happens. It's like when, when you know the the web browser wars have begun. It's awesome, and I am glad to see it. Be, uh, fuck Microsoft. I'm I'm glad to see the open source movement coming up. This is going to be really the biggest battle among nerds. This is going to be the biggest divisive factor among geeks since they changed the rules to Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. It's going to be nerds are going to be divided. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I like Star Trek. Anybody else? I like the old Star Trek, though. I don't like the soap opera, deep space bullshit. I don't care about that. I like the old school. And I was watching the new, uh, the newest thing with the Quantum Leap guy, uh, and it, I just couldn't care. I couldn't give a shit about it. I sat there, and I was watching it, and I was like, man, what happened to the old days? I, I, and then I watched one of the old episodes where they went around the, the sun and went back in time. And I was like, man, I wish I could go back in time, back to when Star Trek franchise didn't suck ass. Then I'd be happy. I, thank you very much, ma'am. I've lost the nerds. Shit. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> There's a black hole in our galaxy. Were you aware of that? There is. It's very true. And uh, it, I, I, it got me thinking. It's like, that's awesome. That's like, okay, it's an imploded star, right? It's got the, the gravitational pull just unimaginable. It sucks harder than anything else in the universe, pulling all kinds of matter, even light, into it to disappear forever. It sucks harder than anything else you can imagine. And it reminded me of, I was trying to relate to it, and I figured, you know what? A black hole sucks harder than anything else. For all of eternity. It's kind of like Jay Leno's career, when you think about it. it. sucks. Maybe that's a comedy nerd joke. I don't know. Man, I'm married. I mentioned that. I'm married. Anybody else married? Who's married? You, Corey. You got kids? Anybody with children that you're neglecting? <laughs> awesome. Uh, I've got kids. And most of you don't. That's cool, though, man. Uh, I can relate. Having a child is the exact same thing. Taking care of a kid is the exact same thing as trying to take care of one of your buddies that's just way too drunk to be in public. It is. Because both your drunk buddy and the baby, 
they, uh, you know, they stumble all over the place. They got the legs made out of jello. You're going to end up carrying their asses home at some point. And uh, both the baby, your buddy, uh, uh, they uh, vomit occasionally without warning or reason or direction, just spew. And both the baby and your drunk buddy, you can't quite make out what they're trying to say, but you can rest assured it's got something to do with sucking on somebody's titties. And it's highly inappropriate. Oh, man. Damn. I've got a, I got a kid, and, uh, and she's cool, man. I went up, I was playing with her in her room this morning, and it reminded me of something. Chronic pot smoking is not effective birth control. It ain't. And I know they tell you it lowers your sperm count, but honestly, it's not to a level effective enough for you to use that as your only form of contraception. So just take it from me, people. Pull out. Every single time, too. Don't fuck around with that. Now, whiskey dick, however, is guaranteed birth control every single time. So stand proud, alcoholics. You're not going to make a baby tonight. Neither am I. Thanks to the boys in room 808. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Oh, man. You guys doing all right? And you're, most of you are from out of town. How far did you drive for this? Bullshit. Where did you drive from? California? There's nerds there. You realize that, right? They got the whole Silicon Valley thing. You came for this. And this alone? Okay, what else is going on? Uh, really, you're from Nashville. Awesome. 2 p.m.? <laughs> oh, you've been coming back for them. Okay. All right, just making sure. Uh-oh, he got a text page. What's going down? Security problems? No? Hey, I've got a problem of my own. I need uh, Linux compiled to work on my original NES. Can anybody help me out? Nintendo Entertainment? Sys All right. Open BSD? I'm a BSD. All right. <laughs> yeah, that's going to run. That doesn't run on a brand new fucking Dell. <laughs> DOS 3. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm kind of worried. I'm a dork. I've got my house wired and shit. I got a two-year-old, and it's kind of fucked up. Because, I mean, being a parent back in the day, watching out for your daughter, it used to be easy. You just get a firearm, you're ready to go. I mean, we got Internet access in the house. I'm afraid of pedophiles and shit on the Internet. It's like now, yeah, I mean, yeah, you used to get a firearm. Now, I've got to get a firewall. I've got to get all kinds of shit. And that ain't right. Damn it. Uh, you guys like porn? I think that's been established. I like porn. Uh, I watch too much porn. Uh, and I figured that out because I was, here's how. I was watching a movie, and I started, I realized I started recognizing locations in films that I've seen in other movies. It's like, Wait a minute. Isn't that the pool table from Big Booty Bitches Volume 7? Yeah, I recognize that stain. <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, my niche in comedy. I don't know what I'm doing yet. Uh, I still haven't figured that shit out. I was thinking the porn thing could be it. Everybody loves porn. I was thinking, you know, I, I, could, I could do like Jeff Foxworthy. You know, remember how he got famous? He was doing that thing where it's like, Blah, 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 blah. You might be a redneck. Every single joke he had fit that little formula. I'm going to do that with porn. So, like, my act about a year from now will be, blah, 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 blah. You watch too much porn. Yeah. Little warning signs. Thank you, Mr. Porn Friend of mine. So it'll be like this. If you, if you see me in about a year, it'll be like, uh, if you've got a penis permanently burned into your television... You watch too much porn. If you have a splatter guard on your keyboard, maybe you watch too much porn. If you're buying lotion in bulk from Sam's Club, perhaps if your couch is stained with ass juice, if 
If your idea of getting freaky is using both hands, <laughs> if your towels are crusty, so it, yeah, and I'm going to go on tour with that shit. It'll be better than the blue collar comedy tour. Mine's going to be called the pearl necklace tour. And it'll be me and these guys <laughs> rocking it out. It's going to be awesome. Oh, man. People were talking about, oh, thank you. I need your propaganda. Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Oh, actually, I'm a subscriber. Anybody else believe? The Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. I'm a, I'm a member of that, and I'm a certified, I'm an ordained priest minister in the Church of the Quivering Otter. Anybody else? I can perform marriages. That's not a C O K Q. No? Okay. Flying spaghetti, people. It's the way, the light, the sauce. <laughs> oh, man. Now, uh, you know, I, I, now I shouldn't even talk shit about religion because I was raised ultra-conservative. My family, very conservative. My parents are so religious that the 700 Club sends them money every month. A little uh, love offering that they get. And my dad, he tries to get me to vote Republican. He, he thinks I'm a Republican. I'm like, God damn you know, I keep trying to tell him that he's not a Republican. I mean, the guy hasn't paid taxes in 15 years. You know, when it comes down to it, my dad is basically a libertarian that hasn't gotten high yet. But I'll fix that. Do you realize that they're rewriting the Bible? Did anybody sign the Bible in 808? It's like their guest book. They're signing the Gideon Bible. They're rewriting the Bible to make it a little more accessible for people of our age group. Uh, I, and I saw an advanced promo copy of the Bible, and it was awesome. They've changed some stuff. Now, in Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount, 136 times he says, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, no, Jesus, I don't. Articulate. And, uh, and now, when Moses is talking to Pharaoh, he says, let my peeps chill, bitch! It's like, wait a minute, you're supposed to be the mouthpiece of God. What are you doing? Hmm. Keeping it real, motherfucker! I saw, I saw a bumper sticker on a minivan on my way here. It said, the death penalty, what would Jesus do? I don't know. Die? I think, yeah, right. He would, he would die. Yeah, he would die. That's what Jesus would do. But thanks for playing. Oh, man. You guys support the homeless people. When you walk around, do you give the homeless people money? I, you know, I used to care. I, I would, I would go, I would give them money and stuff. But then I realized it's like, man, that's not helping them at all. That's not fucking helping them at all. I give them a dollar, whatever. What are they gonna do with it? Are they gonna uh, buy a home? No. No. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna buy drugs, uh, booze. I can do that. Fuck them. I, I realized a long time ago that really to help homeless people, there's only one thing I could do. And maybe you guys want to do this as well, if you care. Next time you see a homeless person, take them home with you. Give them a shower. Give them a change of clothes. Feed them. But most importantly, fuck their brains out. <laughs> fuck the homeless is all I'm saying. <laughs> fuck them hard. I mean, come on. Come on because they, when they woke up that morning, they weren't expecting that. <laughs> they didn't think they were going to get laid. Come on, do them a favor. Do something nice for them. Give them a little ray of sunshine. You know, give them a little hope. Something to look forward to. Fuck the homeless is all I'm saying. Fuck them hard. I've had a rough time, man. I mean, if you if you do want to support the cause, check me out at fuckthehomeless.com. Uh, collecting PayPal donations for me. Well. <laughs> man fuck the homeless dot com yeah I don't think it I don't know who who knows I, bu I bought it yeah that's all I know uh, chadryden dot com and nationalstandup dot com and mangydog dot com and fucking hootiehoo dot org I don't know man ow revolution oh by the way the revolution will not be televised Outside of this hotel. 
Within the walls, yeah, channel whatever. God bless it. Man, uh, my wife, I, was, I mentioned I was married. My wife is sick. I'm kind of in trouble for being here even. My wife is sick. Uh, she's been sick for about four weeks straight. And finally, yesterday, she went to the doctor, got diagnosed with jungle fever. Ain't that a bitch? They gave her a prescription for a big black cock. I'm like, my insurance isn't going to cover that. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, she's not going to get it either. Not on my watch, man. I don't, I don't care how much she begs for it every night. Not going to. Mm-mm. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> they said she could go back to work, though, uh, but she just had to show up 45 minutes late, and then she's cool. Oh, man. You guys fans of the Catholic Church? You church it up? We got a <laughs> schoolgirl. I like the Pope because uh, uh, the way they choose him is awesome. Like with the smoke, fucking white smoke. Like, look, I'm not telling you what to do with your religion, but just update. You know? Yeah, I, just, it's like the whites, even the Native Americans are using cricket phones at this point. So, come on. I'm not saying the Pope has to get a blog, but it'd be cool if he did. Check it out every once in a while. He'd be like, mm, blessed are the meek. Check out this uh, flash video I found of a rapping baby Jesus. It's pretty cool. Ah, oh, yes, I will, Pope. And I will subscribe to your RSS feed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> oh, shit. Man, I, my favorite song of all time is Free Bird. Anybody else? <laughs> no. It's my favorite tune because uh, I know for a fact that in every single trailer park in Across this nation, there's at least five dudes that subscribe to the song Freebird as their religion. They've taken it upon themselves. That's their philosophy and belief. And uh, I, I know, I can just imagine the guy just standing there talking to the police, trying to explain why he just beat the shit out of this girl, and ex- using that as justification. Like, man, don't tell me how to live my life. Man, I'm a free bird, man. Shit. You can't change me. How you gonna change a bird, man? Come on. You ever try to change a bird? You run up to a bird. You try to change it. What do you what happens when you run up to a bird? It flies away! You can't change no bird, man. I'm a free bird. Can't change me? Shit! If I, all right, uh, if I leave here tomorrow, are you going to remember my name? Huh? Are you, you are? Shit. Well, I got me a roofie flavored vitamin. If you want, that'll fix it. Hey, uh, officer, here, hold my bear, man. I'm going to, hold my bear, officer. I'm going to go fly away and take a shit on your car is what I'm going to do. Can't change me, man. I'm a bird. Free. I'm not a free bird. I'm Chad Ryden. Thanks for putting up with my crap. You guys have a good night. Flying spaghetti. Chad Ryden, everybody. Come on. The original free bird himself. Oh, the next guy is actually worth staying for, so stay. All, actually, uh, this guy is a regular MC at Zanies, and all around the southeast he features, uh, which means he does a lot more time, and he's actually funnier. Um, the proprietor of MangyDog.com, which if anybody wants to check out Nashville stand-up in general, you can go to NashvilleStandup.com or MangyDog.com. Those are the two main uh, websites for us. And this guy is just fucking hilarious. He's going to bring us home. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Perry. Thanks, everybody. Oh, wow, it's still packed in here. Thanks a lot, Chad, for clearing out the riffraff. Yeah. Yeah. Heaven fucking forbid I perform in front of people. That would be, that'd be detrimental to my act. 
Ah, oh, how y'all doing, Freak Nick? It's like, it's like nerds gone wild. This is awesome. I am too. I'm totally 808ed right now. Ah, by the way, is, is the uh, keg floating yet on that? Sippy cup, could you uh, check it out for just a second? Sippy Give it up for Knox. Hey, is that your name, Knox? Zag Thor, the Dragon Master over here. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah, this is so great. I uh, just kind of want to talk about something uh, really serious uh, real quick. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, this country faced something uh, that was pretty devastating that affected major regions, um, and it really affected our country. Um, Gilligan died, and uh, so sad, you know. Apparently, uh, FEMA couldn't get to the minnow fast enough, which is a shame. I'm just kidding. If, if Gilligan's, if, if they were real, they really existed, uh, FEMA would have saved Gilligan's crew. But the Harlem Globetrotters would have been fucked. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> all I'm saying is, don't trust any public leader that you can beat at Trivial Pursuit. It's a rule that I go by. Hey, Chad, again. Thank you. <laughs> I kid. Oh, man, I'm so glad to be here. i got to say, uh, I was scoping the room out uh, earlier, and uh, everybody in here, and I mean this, is extremely attractive. Give yourselves a hand for being so damn good looking. I'm not even kidding. People are hot. And I can say that with confidence, folks, because uh, last week I was at the Super Walmart in Paducah, Kentucky. Anybody uh, ever been to Paducah? Anybody? Oh, man. I'll tell you what, if you haven't been there, seriously, if you get the chance, just fucking skip it. Because it is a nightmare up there. Oh, but based on what I saw there, everybody in this room, when you go back to your hotel room, you can stand in front of the mirror and say, I am a sexy bitch. <laughs> After what I saw at the Mesozoic Time Portal, that is the Ashland City Paducah Super Walmart. Sorry. Just, uh, I've been to Ashland City, too. It's twice as bad. <laughs> oh, man. It's bad up there. They're, they're Walmart. It's prehistoric. It's only got two aisles, hunting and gathering. That's how bad it is, people. They tried to sell me a barrow because <laughs> they don't have wheels. That was a thinker. I blame myself. <laughs> too intelligent for the room, I guess. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, man, having so much fun up here. I was kind of worried about uh, coming out here uh, earlier today. I had some uh, car problems. Like I was going up and like have my, just a, not a lot of power. It was doing really bad. And I went to the mechanic, and uh, apparently my car um, is a Kia. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to cost me like $15,000 to get that fixed. Ah, <laughs> uh, bummed I was, when, I, when I was up in uh, Paducah, they have my favorite fast food place there. It's a place called Taco John's, which should tell you about its Mexican heritage right there. <laughs> and their big combo is tacos and tater tots. Mmm. <laughs> what a fun treat that must be. I can just see the president of the company. Let's call him John. And he's there in his office, and he's like, you know, these greasy as hell tacos are good, but they're not shooting out of me fast enough. I need some sort of rocket fuel. Hey, tater tots. There we go. But let's face it, people. A good meal bruises your tailbone. Am I right, folks? Oh, that, I was just reminded of that joke as I walked past the men's room. Damn. I don't know. You don't have to eat everything fried. That's all I'm saying. No, nah, but it's just ta tacos and tater tots. A winning combination of south of the border cuisine and crap you get at the fair, you know. Yeah, uh, give me some tacos, uh, some tater tot, uh, uh, candied apple and a burrito. Uh, for dessert, I'll have one of them cotton candy quesadillas. Goddamn, buddy. 
I eat a lot of crappy food. Any crappy food eaters here? A lot of crappy f- Got to clap. Got to clap. Yeah, I do eat a lot of crappy food. I think it's gotten worse um, ever since uh, the Center for Disease Control uh, released that study that said obese people live longer than people of average weight. Isn't that awesome news? Man, as soon as I heard that, my bitch tits jiggled with glee. I tell you. <laughs> Fatty wanted a treat, I can tell you that. I've just been driving around making fun of, you know, throwing hot dogs at joggers. <laughs> Save yourself! That's how I threw it, too, right up their ankles. Just like you guys. I'm not a thrower. Uh, yeah. Ah, man, I, I tell you, I, I do live in uh, Nashville, which means, like, talking to smart people is weird. Uh, it's like I don't have to talk slow. I don't have to have charts with my jokes. It's pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet. They have a place uh, here in uh, Nashville. kind of confuses me. It's called the Southeastern Career College. And it confuses me because, like, is that a career college based in the southeast, or is, there, or is that a college that teaches you southeastern careers? Like you go to your job interview. Well, Mr. Perry, it says here that you majored in funnel cake design <laughs> with a minor in cousin fucking. Very impressive. I also like how you deep fried your resume. Very good. <laughs> Welcome to IBM. <laughs> I was like, I wonder, you know, I wonder if the, the place has a crusty British dean who has to give the commencement speech, you know. He's like, Ugh, class of art five. You have entered the Southeastern Career College with a mind full of grits. And you leave knowing how to operate a Ferris wheel. Here's your plate of okra and your goatskin diploma. But you can get airbrushed at the booth here for only fourteen ninety five. <laughs> Class of Art Five, you some bitches are dismissed. Now go out and get him or her done. <sighs> Any Larry the Cable Guy fans here? Good. So <laughs> I've never heard that before ever while I've performed. So <clears throat> not here in Nashville. <laughs> you never hear that. Um yeah. I'd, do love Nashville. They have my favorite uh, uh, store here. It's the uh, Pottery Barn for kids. Man, what better place to buy a gift for your gay toddler son than <laughs> the Pottery Barn for kids? What's this, Dad? Oh, a wicker basket and some beeswax candles. Fabulous. That's my gay toddler impression. <laughs> Actually, uh, this is another impression. This is a gay baby. Gay baby. <laughs> All right, thank you. That joke took me six years to master. I was kind of wondering about this. Do you think that uh, amputees feel weird when they're around sectionals? You know, like, like they're at a party and they walk into a room or, you know, like hop into a room and they see like a love seat there. It's separated. They're like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> You can be at a couch any time, but they're not bringing my leg back from Fallujah. All right. Well, the drive on that joke crashed. Huh? Sorry, people. My comedy is very WYSIWYG. You know. What you see what you get. <laughs> ooh, ooh, the frenzy's about to grow. Oh, man. So, let's see. There's actually a place uh, here in Nashville called the Primitive Baptist Church, which is redundant, of course, but it kind of confused me. I had to check it out, and uh, I'd like to do a quick sermon from the Primitive Baptist Church. (laughs) Amen! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Praise (laughs) Praise the caveman, yes. Uh, so I'm a bit of a sports fan. They have a, a, a sport team uh, here in Tennessee called the Tennessee Titans. I like their name. It's tough. Bullshit. It's not tough. My opinion is wrong. 
But I like their name. Like There's a team uh, in hockey called the Carolina Hurricanes. Now, why would you want to name your team after the absolute worst aspect of your state? It's like naming a team the Ethiopia, fight and famine, you know. Or, you know, or the West Virginia can't read, you know. Or the Alabama, Alabama, you know, something like that. You, know? you could have a team called the Montana Crazy Fuckers. I'd root for the crazy fuckers. I would. They could call their stadium the woodshed. You know? Be awesome. Their mascot could be a shit house rat. Just you know. Plus, you know that you know the crazy fuckers would have the absolute coolest cheers ever. You know? C R A Z Y. I say we're crazy. Who said that? I say we're crazy. Who said that shit? Spirit fingers. Jazz hands. Ah, oh, man, you guys have been really fun. What time is it like four? Is it like four o'clock? They stopped serving beer, didn't they? Shit. Uh, do want to wrap up with something uh, kind of serious, because, uh, well, who? <laughs> holy mackerel. Give me back my 20 sided die. So, <laughs> he's up there, uh, Grayskull. Okay, I don't know. Um, I read this thing uh, on the internet, so it has to be true, right? <laughs> it says that uh, ecstasy can reduce your chance of getting Parkinson's disease. Now, my question is, how the hell did they find that out? <laughs> like, did they take Michael J. Fox to a rave? What did they do? <laughs> this is also the Teen Wolf fan convention. I should... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Is it, like, does this mean they're going to give out ecstasy to the elderly? You'll be driving past Sunnyvale Retirement Village. You'll hear, <laughs> The colors! <laughs> hey, Matlock's on! <laughs> you know? They got Dayglo colostomy bags hanging up everywhere. It'd be crazy. That'd be awesome. I'd love that. If I'm 90 years old and my body isn't working anymore, take me to ecstasy land. That's what I say. Everything hurts. Go up. Oh, the music tastes like love. Oh. You know? Sweet. But I do want to talk about a. I want to wrap up with a topic that's kind of serious. Because uh, God knows we didn't come here to laugh. Um, it's a topic that's been in the news. And we all know about it. I'll just bring it up and talk about it. The topic, of course, is Muppets with AIDS. Now, in South Africa, on their version of Sesame Street, they have an HIV-positive Muppet that they use to educate children about HIV. And they're talking about bringing that here. What do you guys think about that? I think it's a great idea, myself. It's, like, it's hard to get support for that in Nashville. You know, it's like, no, I, I, I don't understand why. Now, they're not going to turn Sesame Street into some big, crazy, gay puppet bathhouse, you know. They're going to have a new Muppet named Rex who wears a leather thong and nipple clamps. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, Oscar, why so grouchy? <laughs> Tickle me, Elmo. <laughs> you know, they aren't going to have, like, the cocky monster. You know? Ooh, cocky! <laughs> you know? They aren't going to have the count going, I have one! I have two testicles on my chin! <laughs> They're not going to start fisting Snuffleupagus on the show. Hey, Big Bird, could you come on over and give me the fudge punch? <laughs> you know. By the way, I also run a part-time babysitting service. If anybody wants to, just let me know. Hey, my name's Jesse Perry. Please check out mangydog.com. Thank you all so much. Good night. Give it up once again for the comics that are still in the room. Thanks for hanging out. It's been an excellent show, and uh, hopefully we'll see you next year. Go fucking drink.